Hello, it's Pete here. Welcome to the vlog. Today, it's all about making, it's all about having fun, it's all about gorgeous ties, and it's all about beautiful color palettes. So let's get going. So as I said, this is the card we're going to be making today. It's a very clean, very fresh, and very minimal color palette. We're going to talk more about the color palettes, but let me talk about the dyes that we've used to create it first and foremost. Now, I've dipped in and I've chosen uh, mainly from the fabulous collection in our chapter two. Um, what we have here is fabulous everyday shapes. So we've we've got we've got balloons, we've got cakes, we've got stars, we've we've got a champagne bottle there and glass, we've got gifts. So this is something that's going to work all year round, even your festive makes. Then next up. We've got the fabulous family names. So again, all year round, something for everybody. Fabulous birthday numbers. So elegant, I love these. And they're perfect for paper craft makes and they're perfect to put on the front of a card. Then, this one, this one is gorgeous. This one is actually called Fabulous Frames and Borders. And some of these work with our shaker paints and we'll be looking at and talking about the shaker paints in a little while. And then finally, I've introduced this one uh, by Lisa Jones. This is Hello Love. And I've used the word hello from this collection. All of the others, incidentally, the fabulous ones were designed by the fabulous Debbie Potter. So the color palette that I'm using today is this one. I've kept it down to three colors. I like to work with three colors where possible, but I will bring in other tones. Sometimes I'll bring in opulence. Sometimes I'll bring in black card. Of course, the white makes it a fourth color, not strictly a color, but if we take, let's say, so we've got this lovely color palette here. What about if I introduced a little bit of gold? Suddenly, that makes everything pop, but notice how I cut this down thin, because if it was the same size, it would be a bit overpowering. Same goes for black, if you want to add black to your color palette. When you're putting these together, just cut a thin strip. So that's just gonna be a little accent color that we're gonna drop in there. So that's the color palette I'm using. These are from our uh, muted range and our standard cardstock range. So please go and check out the Sizzix cardstock. Um, what I've done, I've die cut all of the shapes I'm gonna use from all of the colors and we'll decide how they go together. Okay, right now, I'm just taking out the bits I'm gonna use. Now, because we've got this lovely color palette, you can pretty much choose whatever you want. You know, they're, they're, all, they're all gonna mix and match, but it's about, it's about getting, that, getting that lovely balance, so. There we are, I think we're there or thereabouts. So, let's start off, let's start off with this lovely base card here. Um, this determines, and sometimes, now this, this is gonna be the base. I'm gonna put everything on now. You gotta decide first of all, is it gonna be landscape? Is it gonna be portrait? It doesn't really matter. It all comes down to personal preference, but where you put this determines where the rest of it goes. So it's all about using the white space, leaving white space and getting a balance. So let's take a little bit of my lovely express glue. Scribble on the back. And I'm gonna drop this in somewhere around here. Now, I always start off with, with the larger elements. So here, we've got the strip. My, the word, the phrase, hello, is gonna sit neatly at the top. Um, I'm gonna want it at, at a sort of a funky angle there. But before I do that, before I do that, let's attach this. And again, I'm not gonna do it parallel. I'm just gonna put it slightly offset like that. So again, we'll apply just a very thin drizzle of glue. Of course, with our express glue, with that nozzle, very easy to control. There we are, so that's down in place. Then we'll bring this somewhere up here. Now, obviously I wanna put the, it's a 30th birthday. So we're gonna pop 
that number in somewhere. And I've got my number three as well, ready to go. Now, let's see. This, now this, this is interesting because even though I cut the zero from the pink, I actually used the, the outside. So what we think of as the negative, this bit would usually be cast aside. But today, I'm going to be using both the number and the negative. So we're using the number three and the negative of the zero. Um, something I do like to do, obviously, very often, I like to use these lovely foam pads to make sure that we're getting a bit of depth in there. So we're using the shadow as well. Right, so that's, that's starting to look good. Now uh, this here, I don't know, underneath, no. We'll put it about there. And what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is actually just tear that away. You can cut it, you can do whatever you want. It doesn't make a whole heap of difference in the grand scheme of things. So again, just apply a little bit of glue at select points. You would sometimes you don't need to to actually swamp this with glue. Um, you just need a few contact points because it's actually oops, it's actually quite. And the great thing about this glue, incidentally, there's a good opportunity to talk about this, is that it does come off and doesn't leave any residue, which hooray, just as well for me in this case. Now, I'm gonna get my flower, I'm gonna get my lovely flower, just sitting over the top of that. So we're trying to, we're starting to get a little bit of balance with all of these elements. And then we'll pop this in here like so. So we'll get that centered. So you see, see how the shadow is working there. If I put it flat against the green, it's gonna look great. It's gonna look great, but that makes a big, big difference. So let's take some more of my little 3D pads and add them to the number three, one there, and one maybe around here like so. So that's gonna sit alongside that zero. And you know what? I mean, we, we usually say, you know, the, th the thing we, we, we love to work with type, we love to work with um, text, but it doesn't have to be completely parallel. It doesn't have to be line spaced perfectly. Sometimes by just offsetting it just a little bit so, so that's kind of like horizontal and that's slightly off. Having those two working like that is, is pretty cool, I think. Now you could, you could even go one stage further. Let me, take, let me take this one off here. I've just made an executive decision. So let's add a bit of glue to this bit. We're not gonna use the 3D pad because now I'm, I want it to sit on that pink there. That's, that's better. That's better. That, that brings me to my happy place. That does, that's, that's looking great. Now, of course, it, we've got the hello. And that, mm, let's have it sitting about there. Again, we're just gonna dot little bits of this adhesive. And again, as I say, this bottle, you get that great control. You really do. People use, some people like to put glue on the back of their hands. Some people use the media mat. It's, um, you know, it's entirely up to you how you want to do that. Some people, others prefer to use it direct from the bottle. Um, I tend to use my media mat, I must be honest, but, but I just want to show you that from the bottle is perfectly acceptable. So I've got a few more elements. The TH, as in 30th. There we are, we'll, we'll set that somewhere like this. So, you know, it's, it's kind of coming off, it's, it's cutting across, it's doing all those things, and it's creating that wonderful sort of sense of kind of adventure. It's, 
you know, it's looking pretty cool. And we need to be brave and try these things, you know. We do have a tendency to put everything quite linear on our baseline. I don't have much time for that, I must be completely honest. Um, because when you put elements down like this, when you start using dimension, it brings a sense of fun to the card, a sense of freshness, a sense of animation. You know, it's almost moving in front of your eyes. So let's pop that flower there. So we've got the white coming down like that. It's giving us that lovely balance. So, oh, you know what? I think I'm going to get an extra little flower and pop it in the center there. Now, this is the question. What color flower, what color flower shall I use? The green would echo the green in the background, but we've got the mint going across there. This is where it becomes subjective. This is where it comes down to personal choice. I think because the amount of green, I think that mint gives it better balance. And it's echoing this large mint strip across the top here. So yeah, we'll pop a bit of glue. You know what? It would be, even if, even if you went with pink, that, that too would be fine. It's horses for courses. Uh, and there you have it, really, really simple, really quick. Um, it's, just, it's just really nice, fresh card. And we don't always need to throw everything at our projects. You know, you, you can keep it simple and sometimes the results are just stunning. Now, while we're here, there's something else I wanted to show you. This is using uh, the everyday shapes and the frames and borders. And of course, we've got sister coming across there. So that is from the, the family words. And you'll notice that it's a shaker card. And the thing about filming is, you can't see it, it's just a blur. It's just a blur. I'm gonna shake it, and our James is gonna try and capture that. But if he can, he's a better man than I am. Well, he probably is anyway, but, but there you go. So it's a shaker card. Now, what have I used for that? I have used our wonderful shaker panes. Sizzix has brought out, uh, brought these out last year. So we've got squares, we've got circles, and we've got hearts. And there are three sizes of each in the pack. Now, you can also get these sets of uh, dies. Now, you'll notice again, there are six dies in the collection. The two smallest work for the smallest shaker pane and so on and so forth. And uh, I'll, I'll show you how they work, how they go together, what they're all about because um, it's really, you know, making shaker cards if you're using like foam tape or something like that, it can be such a pain, um, no pun intended, or was there? Um, but what we've got here, we've got our three shaker paints now. This is a tough acrylic, and you notice this red tape here, that's where your adhesive is, so you don't have to glue anything. Um, now, the two, the two smallest frame, framelit dies from this set, they will cut that which which can be a frame so that can allow you to sit your shaker pane on the front of the card and you can use any dies embossing folders or, or whatever it is you want to use with these or what you can do is you can cut the smaller one and you can place it inside the square as well um, another thing that you can do is you can place your shaker pane underneath like that. So you can have it on the inside of the card or you can have it on the outside of the card. So it makes it very versatile, it depends where you wanna go. In this case, we've gone on to the front of the card and I'm gonna use the medium size shaker pane here. Now you, you can fill, you can put the square of card inside there if you wanna put a backing. It could be a photograph. We've done a lot of things with these where we just, use a family photograph or something, you know, some kind of memory. Um, but today I'm just gonna show you how to add the shaky stuff and where to go from there. So let's get some of our sequins and beads. These are Sizzix sequins and beads. I love these. There are five different pots in the tube. You can keep them separate or like me, you can pour them in and get this wonderful kaleidoscope effect. Um, 
And let's make sure we've got everything there. If you wanted to add glitter, if you want to use different colors, if you want to mix silver gold, rose gold, if you want to, you know, mix some different pinks or whatever, if you want to match the colors to the colors on this card, so that, so that lovely green and the pink, you could do that. We do have those available in our sequins and bead collection. So there we are, that goes there. And then next up we have these acrylic sheets which are specifically sized to work with uh, the individual shaker paints. They come obviously with the shaker paints and I just peel away that backing and I can place the acrylic sheet on the top. Now this has this has backing both both front and back which peels away with ease so that keeps it dust free it stops it from getting scratched the last thing you want is this getting home from the store or wherever you buy your shaker paints and having that all scritched and scratched so keep that on till the last minute and that's it so as I say, in the set, in this wonderful, uh, fabulous frames and borders set, two of the frames actually work with the shaker paints. So they're specifically sized. You can use them without, that's fine. It's entirely up to you, but they do work with. So if you're, if you're looking to invest in a set like this, it's always good to know that they will work with other products from the Sizzix range. And just, just to show you, this is how it sits on the largest shaker pen. So very versatile, but most importantly, lots of fun. So there we have it. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I, I just, sometimes I like to rein it back in, you know, simple colors, simple color palette, beautiful dyes. There's nowhere to hide, no t fancy techniques or anything. Just let the dyes and the colors do the talking for me. And if you've enjoyed that, don't forget to check out all of our other social media outlets and see some wonderful makes by all our other designers as well. Thanks for joining me. I've been Pete. I'll see you again soon.